and welcome to today's Bible reading and podcast, which is looking at Hebrews chapter 4, the Scripture Union Word Live Bible passage for today. Myself and my friend Colin McLeod are taking turn about Monday to Saturday each day to read these passages and share together uh, in reflection and in prayer. If you're at all interested in history, then you're maybe familiar with the podcast entitled And the Rest is History, in which those who know about the past make connections between the way things are today and what happened long ago. Things that we've heard about are explained, the original cause of how things came to be. So the events that took place in history are described, and the rest is history, what happened afterwards was the result of all that. Well, the rest is history in our Bible reading today, but in a slightly different sense, that there was a rest that took place long ago at the very start of history, and it's significant for all of us in our lives today as we seek to rest in peace with God. Let us pray, and thank you, loving Heavenly Father, that you make peace with us through your Son, Jesus Christ, breaking down the barrier that we have put up by our hostility to you, our disobedience of you, and our forgetfulness of all that you have done. We thank you that you have come to break that barrier down and to rescue us from our loneliness and from our disturbance so that we can be at peace with you again. And we pray that today's reading will remind us of what you made for us and made us for so that we can rediscover that sense of peace of mind and body and spirit and soul, which belongs to all those who take comfort in you, and so that we can exude that peace and share it with others, sharing the security that you long for us all through Jesus our Lord, in whom we pray. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4 begins by referring back to a psalm that was quoted in chapter 3 that promised God's rest to those who obeyed him and says as long as that promise of resting in him pulls us on to God's goal for us, we need to be careful that we are not disqualified. We receive the same promises as those people in the wilderness but the promises didn't do them a bit of good because they didn't receive the promises with faith. If we believe, though, we'll experience that state of resting, but not if we don't have faith. Remember that God said, exasperated, I vowed, they'll never get where they're going, never be able to sit down and rest. God made that vow even though he'd finished his part before the foundation of the world. Sometimes it's written, God rested the seventh day, having completed his work. But in this other text, he says, they'll never be able to sit down and rest. So this promise has not yet been fulfilled. Those earlier ones never did get to the place of rest because they were disobedient. God keeps renewing the promise and setting the date as today, just as he did in David's psalm, centuries later than the original invitation, Today, please listen, don't turn a deaf ear. And so this is still a live promise. It wasn't cancelled at the time of Joshua, otherwise God wouldn't keep renewing the appointment for today. The promise of arrival and rest is still there for God's people. God himself is at rest, and at the end of the journey we'll surely rest with God. So let's keep at it and eventually arrive at the place of rest and not drop out through some sort of disobedience. God means what he says. What he says goes. His powerful word is sharp as a surgeon's scalpel, cutting through everything, whether doubt or defence, laying us open to listen and obey. Nothing and no one can resist God's will, and we can't get away from it, no matter what. Amen. And I pray that God will bless this reading to us. So the rest is history, the history of what happened on the seventh day of creation. In six days, God created the heavens and the earth, starting off with light and finishing up with human beings living in a perfect place. And on the seventh day, we're told that God rested, not because he was tired, 
But because he was finished, there was no more to be done. Everything that he had made was very good. It couldn't get any better. And it was simply there to be enjoyed. And that was God's plan for creation, that the people like us that he had made in his own image would live at peace and in harmony with one another and with him, enjoying all that he had made and enjoying him. God would rest, secure in the knowledge of our love for him and our appreciation of him, and we would rest in gratitude for the things that he had made for us and the gift of himself that he had shared with us. That's the ideal, the idyllic creation that God intended. God entered his rest on the seventh day, and we were already there to share it with him. The rest is history. It happened long ago. But the peace was broken by human sin, and you know the story of Eve and Adam eating the fruit, and then Cain and Abel and the murder that took place, and then the deterioration of human behaviour, even after the flood, even after Abraham, all the way through the history of the Old Testament, and indeed the experience of people today, the rest that God created seems long ago and forgotten about. But in history, God kept trying to repair or replace it. And the passage that we read today refers to a promise made in the time of Joshua, come to the promised land and enter my rest, and an appeal made in the time of David. So that's 12 or 1300 BC and 1000 BC. God opening up to people that possibility that he could bring an end to the disturbance that sin and disobedience was using to wreak havoc in their lives and they could rediscover the peace of God and know the fulfillment of that invitation. But it never happened. It remained a dream. Some people perhaps got close to it in their faithfulness and worship and praise, and other people rejected it as no more than a pipe dream and sought to make peace and prosperity for themselves in other ways. And so the rest in history was never really found in all its fullness, only occasional glimpses of it for those who found some moments of peace with God. But the promise remains, and that's the point of this passage. It's there for us to work towards. So the writer to the Hebrews is writing to people who are in danger of dropping out or facing persecution for their faith and looking for easier, more comfortable, alternative ways to live. They still want something religious in their life because they know they can't do without God, but they don't want to embrace all that God has offered us in Jesus Christ, the promise of perfect fulfillment of all our hopes and dreams, but the way of the cross to get there with suffering and endurance, persecution and the sacrifice of witness and service of a world in need. And what we're being told here is not to give up the goal because the history God began with on the seventh day is also the destination that he is leading us towards and as sure as fate, God will get there and those who remain faithful to him will be there. And the question is whether we complete the journey of faithfulness, placing our trust entirely with him, dealing with the disruption along the way and not being distracted from the path that he had given us. The people of Israel were promised the land, but they chose the golden bull calf at Sinai. David was given an eternal kingdom, but he sinned with adultery and murder and lost that sense of peace. But Jesus has rebuilt it for us, the perfect king, leading us into the land of promise, the eternal rest that God has for his people. And that's what we hope for and look forward to. Rest in peace is often carved in a gravestone, and perhaps are images of those who have died sleeping peacefully under the earth. But the rest that God has planned for us is the active enjoyment of a perfect creation, a garden of Eden, enriched with flowers and fruits and full of enjoyment and beauty, fulfilment and friendship of people with one another and with God. It's what we are made for. It's the peace that we find when we are at home. Home sweet home, peace with God, everlasting and effective. Historically, God created a rest. In time, people rejected it. But at the end, he has promised it to us. And it's there for us to work towards. Maybe our faith will grasp that vision and we will get closer to the peace of mind that God has held out to us by committing ourselves in obedience to his word, 
to working for and serving him. Let us pray. And thank you, Father, that in life you grant us peace of mind and the security of faith, knowing that you are with us, your spirit inhabits our lives, your words speak truth to us and provide sure and safe guidance. We confess as sin that we have often strayed away from these things into our own path, making up our own truth, following our own inspiration, seeking wealth and prosperity at the expense of others instead of sharing it with others. But that's not your plan. Your all-sufficiency is in plentiful supply for everyone to have more than enough for all eternity. And we pray that we would grasp that in faith and share the sense of your presence that we have now with those around us who are not yet secure in their knowledge and their love of you, so that they might see the shallowness of what they have and be attracted to the fullness of what you promise. Through Jesus our Lord, in whom we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining with me today in Bible reading and in prayer.